Welcome back to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean, and today we're rebuilding a supercharger. So if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you've watched our videos before, welcome back. Now like we mentioned in our supercharger installation video, a supercharger is one of those ultimate sick mods. And today, we actually got two here on the bench for your viewing pleasure. The reason we have two is because one is from my truck and one is from Steve-O's truck. We're rebuilding both of them. We have a pretty unique situation here for all of you out there in YouTube land watching. We have two separate housings of the same generation supercharger that are a little bit different. And we're gonna show you what's needed on both of these superchargers to replace these needle bearings. If you wanna see an in-depth video on how to rebuild the nose cone, click on the link above. We go in great detail on how to replace all these components because this video isn't really gonna focus on all the intricacies of how you rebuild this. It's really gonna be about how to press out and install the needle bearings that guide the rotors inside the housing of the supercharger. Now, typically when you buy a rebuild kit, you're gonna get all the components to rebuild your nose cone and replace the needle bearings in the back of the housing. We're gonna provide links in the video description for all the components you need to rebuild your supercharger and even links to replace your pulley. Now in this video, we're gonna be using some specialty tools to disassemble and reassemble the components inside the supercharger, one of which is gonna be a 20 ton press. We have some press sleeves, we have some additional sockets we're gonna use. And along the way, we're gonna be giving you some measurements with the digital calipers so that you can understand a little bit more about how this comes apart and where things are sitting. So if you end up taking apart yours and you don't know how things go back together, you don't know what the tolerances are, this video is hopefully gonna help you understand all those different measurements. Now I wanna point out something super important that's going to basically make this job a lot harder. And that is how these needle bearings get pressed out of the supercharger. On my housing, you can see the back of the needle bearing it's kind of rusty a little bit, but it's back there. The back of the rotors right here will fit into those needle bearings in the back of the housing, and that's how they're going to spin freely. If we take a look at Steve-O's supercharger housing, his rear needle bearing is not exposed. So we're gonna to need to use a blind bearing puller to extract that bearing versus on mine, where it should be much easier to just press it out the back for the other needle bearing on the other side, we're just gonna press that right through and it's gonna fall out one of these intake chambers. When removing the rotors from the supercharger housing, just like we noticed on our nose cone rebuild, we had some bolts that were a little bit longer and those longer bolts lived in this location and this location. You can see by the dowels, they kind of protrude a little bit. And if we go over to the supercharger housing, it's these top ones here, the left and the right one. So if you get confused about the longer bolts, take note of that. Here are all the parts that are part of a rebuild kit that we'll link in the video description. It comes with some sealers, some bearings for the nose cone, the rear needle bearings that go inside the housing. We have a phenolic coupler, a C-clip to hold the seal onto the end of the nose cone. And something additional that Steve-O bought is a new pulley and a pulley nut for the end of the supercharger because what's been happening with his is his pulley's been chewing up belts. And URD added these metal grooves to their pulleys to prevent belt slip. However, the anodized coating eventually wears off on them. And at that point, if you see shiny silver metal on the pulley, it needs to be replaced. The other item you're gonna wanna purchase when rebuilding your supercharger, or even if you just wanna replace the oil inside your nose cone, is some supercharger oil. This is just made by AC Delco, some kind of generic supercharger oil, but this works fine. And one thing you might notice is Stevo has this extra fitting on the backside of his supercharger. I do not. That is his URD seventh injector. So we're gonna be tackling that job soon. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. First step, we gotta remove the nose cone and that's held on by these 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna get on those and break them free. So on Stevo's, all these bolts ended up being the same length. But again, on mine, I have different length bolts. Just keep that in mind. 
So the next thing we need to do is drain the supercharger. We're going to put this over a bucket and then we're gonna to start to separate the nose cone housing from the main supercharger housing. Now, what's nice about having two superchargers here is that we're noticing some differences and this may help you depending on the supercharger assembly you have. Stevo's fill plug seems to be a Torx 30 versus my two nose cone assemblies seem to be a 5 16 Allen. So I'm used to seeing Allen fill plugs in these areas versus Stevo's, which is a Torx. And Stevo said that this was bought brand new from Toyota. So there's no reason to believe that somebody else changed this, but it's possible. Either way, you're just gonna have to find the correct Allen or Torx for your fill plug to remove it. So to remove this, you have these little fins that allow you to get a pry bar in there. So we're gonna give it a little bit of hammer action. And we can see some daylight right there. So go on either side, try to do it evenly. And just work it until you can get it off. And are we seeing some oil? Yeah, there's oil coming up. Probably hooking up on the dowels right now. There we go. And here's our coupler, our phenolic block, and our nose cone. It's like a threesome right now. <laughs> We're going to show you some different measurements on all of these different nose cones. That's the benefit, really, that we're giving you, the viewer, is we got all these different kind of nose cone assemblies, and we're really just showing you the differences between all these. One thing we noticed at first is the housing itself has been milled out on Stevo's versus these other two that I have. This side isn't really milled out. This side is, and same thing with this one. The casting is still intact. Uh, versus you can see the shiny metal there where it actually got milled out a little bit. The other thing we noticed is that this shaft that goes through is a little bit different. These two have a little bit of a bevel and this one is just straight. It's just flat. So it doesn't bevel off towards the, the edge here. I don't think that matters very much, but the measurement that I want to give you is how much this shaft is sticking out from the back of this part with these three pins. And we did this off camera, so let's do it again on camera. The distance between the top of this shaft and that plate with the pins is 2.8 millimeters approximately. The second one is 3.2 millimeters approximately. And Stevo's is again 3.2 millimeters approximately. These ones with the beveled shaft seem to be sticking out a little bit more than this one without the beveled shaft. So another thing we notice on these supercharger nose cone assemblies is there is different numbers stamped on the bottom of the nose cone. So this is the number stamped on Stevo's and this is the number stamped on both of mine. One thing you'll notice is that these pulleys are red and this one's black but the color isn't so significant except for these are URD pulleys and this is just a stock Toyota or TRD pulley. The next thing we notice is this mounting hole. This mounting hole originally mounted the static tensioner that came on early model superchargers, the first gen supercharger, the gray top, and even some early second gen superchargers, the black top that we're working with in this video. And Toyota eventually began to include a dynamic tensioner over the static tensioner. And I'm sure they updated their casting and they no longer needed this mounting point. So they just closed it off. So that's what I think we're seeing here with Stevo's nose cone. So now to start disassembling Stevo's nose cone, we're going to remove this 18 millimeter nut. It's kind of unique and start to press some of these components out. 18 mil, let it rip. They must have used red thread locker then. They must have used a really strong one. Some nuts come with a nylon end. These nuts don't. When reinstalling the nut back onto the end of the nose cone, you really want to use thread locker just to prevent that nut falling off the end because the supercharger spins really fast. To get this pulley off, we're using a three jaw puller on my stock pulley on my supercharger we could just wiggle this off by hand. Now, I do want to mention 
that you want to be careful when using a three jaw puller. It could warp or bend or mutilate the pulley in some way and then it just won't ride true. So with the potential of messing up the pulley, if it's really stuck on there and you're forced to use a three jaw puller, it's best to have an extra pulley on hand just in case. Okay, so it wasn't on there that bad then, huh? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's good enough now. Oh, wait a minute. Is that thread locker or is that metal? I don't know, squeeze it. No, it's thread locker. Okay. So we just press this out of the nose cone assembly here. You get the press on and you push out the back. We have a bearing that's pressed onto the shaft. We have this piece that's pressed on and then this spring that's just loose. Inside the housing, there's also a bearing back there in addition to the dust seal. A lot of these places on this shaft are hard stops. And essentially you're just gonna press on the components until you meet significant resistance. But just for reference, we have the nut that goes onto the threads. We have the pulley that goes onto this smooth surface here. There is a little bit of a step from here to this line. This part right here is writing on the seal surface. And this portion right here is actually pressed into the bearing in here. And then it does a hard stop right here. We wanna press off both of these components off the shaft, the bearing and this little plate with these pins. We have a press sleeve and we have a nine millimeter socket and it's going to press it through. We just need to make sure we have enough room at the bottom for the shaft to have some clearance when we're pressing it out. After we pressed off this coupler and this bearing, we're gonna press the bearing and the coupler right back on. Now in the video for the nose cone rebuild, we pressed on both of these components at the same time and we got a little bit hung up on these splines. They didn't quite line up correctly. So we're thinking we're gonna press on the bearing first and that's gonna give us the ability to hopefully line up the splines a little bit better before we start pressing this back on. We just got done pressing this new bearing on. What you wanna make sure is that whatever you're using to apply pressure on the inner race is not gonna interfere with these splines because this component has the same splines and it kind of locks it into place. So we're gonna put that on and we're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket to get inside the space between the pins and we're gonna start pressing this component back on. One thing you wanna be mindful of is when this shaft starts to stick out, you have some room for it to go into something. So with this socket, there's gonna be plenty of room for that shaft to not get stuck inside this socket. I keep on threatening that we're not gonna show some press work, but here we are <laughs> showing some press work. So I'm supporting it on this side of the lip so we can push the bearing and the seal out. And we have a 22 millimeter socket flipped around the opposite direction so we can press on the inside of that bearing and press it on out. It's like a hot dog in the hallway. Corn dog in the Astrodrome. We got the nose cone buttoned back up. We got all the bearings pressed back in and the seal and it's ready to go. So now we're going to shift our attention to the supercharger housing. And at first glance, everything seems to be rotating pretty smoothly. We'll take this phenolic block off. It's just kind of like pressed on there. It's pulled off by my hand. And next thing we have to do is start prying on these corners and get this whole rotor assembly pulled out. I'm going to use these little ears right here so we can knock this off and we can already see some daylight. So we're just going to work this around. Yes, there it is. You do not want to drop this and damage your rotors. These rotors look to be in pretty good cosmetic condition compared to mine. And you can see how these turn on each other and force induction and give you some boost. Just inspecting these surfaces, they all feel smooth and there's no coating flaking off whatsoever. Taking a closer look at my rotor pack that came out of my supercharger. We have a lot of coating that's that's flaking off here. It's not a big deal according to many supercharger rebuilders out there, but just comparing the wear on these two superchargers, mine either A has more <laughs> mileage on it or maybe it's just older, but I'm just going to throw this back in and send it. I'm not really too worried about the coating. The main thing you need to be worried about or inspect is whether or not there's any major gashes or grooves on the surface because you want this to be able 
to spin freely without any obstruction. Look, there's like a little bit of play or something right there, but let's see if there's any play on this one. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of play. When these pins on the back of the rotors fit into these needle bearings, they kind of hold them in place, and I'm sure they position these accordingly, and there's no gross movement like this, so. Next thing we want to inspect is the surface inside the supercharger housing, and you can see the two needle bearings back there. What's the, the purple guy from McDonald's? What's his name? Hamburg the Hamburglar. Ronald McDonald. No, no, the the Hamburg no. Hamburglar is the... Yeah. Oh no, that's the... Uh... It's like that purple guy from the McDonald's. And next I'm gonna share with you another measurement. It's gonna be the distance that these needle bearings are pressed into the housing. And on both my supercharger housing and Stevo's supercharger housing, we're getting a measurement distance from this surface to the beginning of the needle bearing of two millimeters. So when we press these bearings back in, we're gonna make sure that they're pressed in two millimeters subflush of that rear surface. Again, here we are, my supercharger housing, Stevo's. There's a bearing that lives in this area. On the back here, you can see it's a little bit rusty. The plan is with mine is both of the bearings we're gonna press through. This one's gonna obviously fit through this hole. The other one is going to fall out somewhere over there. And same thing on Stevo's. We could press out the one that's on this left-hand side, but this one doesn't have a place to go. So we're gonna use a blind bearing puller, put it into the bearing, expand it, and try to pull it out. So this is our setup on this side. We have a three quarter inch copper pipe that we've cut to the length that we need in order to press this bearing out. And what's supporting the supercharger is this press sleeve. On the back of the supercharger, you have this kind of like flat area and that's what we're supporting it on. And we're just gonna press the bearing all the way through. So we kept pressing until the bearing popped through. So now it's just loose in the back of the supercharger housing. And we're going to start to tilt it to allow the bearing to, to fall out. There it goes. There it goes. There she is. Okay. I'm gonna try to press the second bearing through now. Feel like it's moving? Yeah. Come on, Okay. Just hanging onto this plate, so. We got two supports here because it was wanting to push over because we are not we don't have it centered and where we can support it. We're hoping this is happy. So again, on my housing, I'm able to push the bearing through the backside. So it's about halfway out, starting to make contact with the housing. Keep going. It's almost out, yeah. Where'd the plate go? Right here. Man, that was that was pretty dramatic. Yep. It went over here somewhere. So we got a pretty nice little gouge down here, but a little touch up paint. I think we'll be back to new. So now we got that bearing out. We're not messing with the rotors. We're not messing with these gears. We're not pulling these off. We're not replacing any bearings. We did turn these and they turned smoothly and they feel pretty much the same, with the exception of the, the coating difference here. But they both feel smooth, and so we're not messing with those. So if you need to do any type of maintenance on these rotors, definitely send it off for repair or rebuild. Like I mentioned, we can press out the bearings on my type of casing on the supercharger. And for this one in the middle, it is going to be able to be pressed through, like the first one we did. That second one with Stevo's housing, the one on the left here, that's the problem child. That's what we're gonna attempt the blind bearing puller with. So we got everything set up in the press. We got some support down here on this back of the supercharger that's relatively flat. We got our copper pipe and we got a little plate so we can press down. So let her rip. Oh, 
Okay, this is where it's starting to hit a little bit. It's loading up. So it loads up a little bit. Now it's make easy again. Must be through. Yikes. Zoom the creeper. There it goes. There it be. There it goes. All right. Now we're going to get the blind bearing puller and get to the next one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing some good old fashioned ingenuity. We're using the blind bearing puller puller feature. It had these arms on it that you kind of like you know, prop up against something so you can pull. But these arms aren't really gonna fit inside there and we don't wanna mar up the inside. So this is our solution. We got this all the way extended out to the, almost the very last thread. We're gonna start tightening down on this and hopefully the bearing gets pulled out. Out. We really wanted to make sure we didn't mar up the surface. We used some wood, it was too thick, and we didn't really have enough distance, so then we got these uh, 1 8 metal plates. Six, three oh, the thickness of these metal plates was 3 16 We supported it on the backside with some wood shims just so we didn't mar up the surface. And as you saw, we were able to use an impact wrench and, uh, and get her out of there. Now we gotta press the bearings in, right? With this blind bearing puller kit, you have this slider where you can slide hammer the bearing out. We were failing miserably. We tried with all our might multiple times and we just couldn't get it off. So this kit also came with this puller that we just used. Traditionally, this would thread on to this and then you could slide hammer it out. We got something rigged up and we we're able to actually use this puller to start pulling the bearing out with the setup that we just showed. All right, here's the money shot with Stevo's housing. And as you can see, this bearing can't go anywhere. It's completely sealed. So you have to pull it out versus mine where, well, you saw that you could push it out the back. And then with this side, it's the same on both of ours. We just pushed it out and it fell out one of the intake ports there. So if you have the type of housing that Stevo has, don't be applying pressure and trying to press this out. You're gonna have to pull it we're at the stage where we're pressing the new bearings in. So because we're pressing on the center portion, we also have it supported with another press sleeve on this little ear that mounts the, I wonder what this mounts. I think this mounts like the fuel rail to it, something like that. Yeah, I think it's a fuel rail. But anyways, this is also helping us support this thing. So it's a little bit more stable as we press down. We have our copper tube that we cut to size again, and we have a puck from the seal driver kit. You wanna consider using something that's not gonna gouge the back of the supercharger housing. So these pucks that we're using are made out of aluminum to minimize the risk of damaging the supercharger housing. And we're using just the smallest puck right here. That way, when we press down, we're going to bottom out the puck. So let's continue pressing. Yeah, I think that's, that's So we just pressed one of the bearings in. We use the press sleeve kit on top so that it will make contact with the back of the supercharger housing and essentially seat it flush. Now we need to press the bearing in an additional two millimeters so it's sub flush. And although the instructions that came with this kit doesn't really specify, our measurements beforehand indicate approximately two millimeters. A nickel is 1.9 millimeters, so what we're gonna do is just rest it right on top and then press until that's flush, remove the nickel, and then we'll be approximately two millimeters sub flush. So let's put the nickel in and continue the press work. So we're all done with pressing that first bearing in. We did a little measurement. We got 1.82 millimeters. It's close enough to two millimeters to make us happy. Well, to make Stevo happy, right Stevo? Right. The point is, is that it's sub flush. 
So you just wanna press it in a little bit further than the back of the supercharger housing right there. So the needle bearings are pressed back into the housing. Now we're gonna put the rotor pack assembly back in. These pins are gonna be in the left-hand side. For the rotor pack housing, we're gonna put a little bit of this gasket maker on this surface that seals right here, just to keep it airtight. And then I think we're probably gonna need to get some mallet action so we can get these dowel pins kind of seated inside the supercharger housing here. Some light taps just to get it seated. So now we're ready to seal the nose cone back onto the front here. So we cleaned the mating services really well, both sides, and now we're gonna put some Permatex anaerobic gasket maker onto the nose cone and install it onto the supercharger housing. So referencing some genuine TRD installation instructions for the nose cone, there is a torque or a tightening pattern on this nose cone. So we'll include these instructions in the video description in case you want to reference these when you're rebuilding your supercharger. I'm giving you some extra insurance on the bottom because that's where mine started leaking. It might seem like a lot and it probably is. It's like a shitload. So I'm just using this illustration as, as a guide and they really smeared this stuff on and, and so did I. I actually had a leak on my supercharger after doing the nose cone and I don't know if there was not enough or we didn't tighten it in the right torque order, but we're putting on there for some extra insurance. And so now we're going to put this thing on. Don't forget the phenolic block, the coupler. Here's the coupler. We're going to insert the attachment pins into the holes with the flange openings. So the flange openings are these openings with grease in them. And we're going to press this phenolic block until it seats against the gear fully. So we just kind of push it on there. And we're gonna install the phenolic block onto the guide pins of the supercharger housing. Again, putting them into these holes that are slightly raised. This is probably gonna be hard to see, but you just turn this a little bit and guide them in, and then we'll need to shimmy. And then the dowels are gonna fit into these two holes and we're just gonna kinda press it on as best we can without messing up the gasket. All right, we'll use some persuasion here. Okay, how's it looking? Look around the sides and the gasket. Looks pretty good. Now we're gonna get our new bolts in. And Steve-O got these fancy Allen head bolts, I guess. So these like stainless steel ones. So we're gonna install those next. So we're going to use the guide and the TRD instructions to tighten these as follows. We're going to torque these all down to 20 foot-pounds and gradually tighten them down, snugging these up little by little, and then going back and torquing them. So now that we got these all torqued to 20 foot-pounds, we're going to crack open this fill plug and put in 120 milliliters of supercharger oil, which is technically four 0.05 ounces so it's one of these containers and a sneeze of sorts so we're gonna open this up and fill it up so we filled the supercharger nose cone full of supercharger oil we slapped our superchargers back on top of our engines it's been a couple of months now since we've been running them and we're happy to report that everything's running smoothly. Now, as you saw in the video with these two different style of supercharger housings, you're gonna need to be mindful of which style you have before you jump into this job. And if you have the style that Stevo has, you're gonna have to use the blind bearing puller to pull one of those bearings out. And if you have the style that I have, you're gonna have the luxury of just pressing them right through, which obviously is a little bit easier. Now, one thing I gotta say is that my supercharger was getting a little bit noisy, and after replacing these rear needle bearings, everything is as quiet as a mouse. It almost sounds like a stock truck when running at idle. Stevo's supercharger also got a little bit quieter, so I think we both needed a refresh with those rear needle bearings, so this was a pretty successful job. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye-bye, and we'll see you in the next one for some more sick mods.